Life is short, and being in radio can grind it to a halt. Influence FM is for running your stations at your convenience, when you want, where you want. With Influence FM, you can now do the impossible. Enjoy your life, all the while knowing that Influence FM will notify you instantly about any anomalies. And with the flick of a thumb, you can see that your station's assets and operations are running at full speed. Go ahead, take that vacation. We dare you. We sell freedom, not software. Free yourself to do, well, precisely what you want. Day 13, halfway through the week, hump day. What do we got going on today? We're going to go in depth on why radio works today. And this is in your workbook, and you'll want to review these pages quite a few times, as well as watch this one quite a few times. We're going to try to sum up in about 15 minutes uh, what I've learned in a career of over 30 years. Now, first up, it says radio offers effective targeting. It really does. You can pick a format that fits the kind of people you want to reach. You want to reach young people who are spending money on uh, Priuses or smaller cars? You, there's a radio station for that. You want to reach older Americans uh, who are retirees or whatnot? There's a radio station for them, dealt with with uh, the music, the news, things of that nature. Highly effective targeting. Not only that, think about this for a second. When do people read the newspaper? Usually first thing in the morning or last thing at night, right? If you've got an ad in there for lunch today, when is that ad going to be seen? Not close enough to your time of purchase. Same thing goes with the internet. If you put an ad on, let's say you put a Facebook ad in, and somebody usually checks their Facebook first thing in the morning. Well, they might see the coupon in time, but they might forget about it. I don't know about you, but I forget things 10 minutes after I've heard them. So radio can target because you can run a lunch ad at lunchtime or a different ad at a different time. And that comes in where we say we reach people at relevant times and places. You know, Nielsen years ago said two out of three Americans are listening to radio during TV's prime time. That sounds unbelievable. Listen to it again. Two out of three Americans are listening to the radio during TV's prime time. You're saying nobody sits home and has the radio on. No, they don't. Get out on the highway. Look at the uh, Walmart parking lot. How many people are out there between 7 and 10 at night on the roads? They're listening to the radio. This is their last chance. Now you say, well, my store closes at 5. So what? Doesn't mean you can't divert them or make them go, hmm, maybe I'll wait and go see Bob tomorrow morning. Now, in an ad avoidance world, you remember pop-up blockers that used to be on web browsers. Well, now they're in the things, so nobody can pop ads up anymore. Radio reaches people who do things like, you got that thing on your TV now where you can fast forward through the commercials, or you, know, you, you flip past the ads on the uh, internet or whatever else it is. In radio, people sit through the commercials, except again when you've got the younger demographics, they tend to punch the buttons when commercials come on. The rest of the people just sit there through them and they, they're looking for the uh, information sometimes. Of course, radio is considered to be a passive medium, but isn't all media passive? I watch TV these days and I got my Kindle in my lap because there's nothing on TV that keeps my attention enough so that I can't read at the same time. Now radio has a multiplier effect on other media. This means that if you have done a television ad, if the sound of the ad on the radio is pretty similar to the sound of the ad on the TV, they will picture what was on TV just by playing back the sound. All I have to do is play Tom Bodette's voice with that little fiddle and you picture the Motel 6 logo. You can't help yourself. Radio can create share of mind for a brand. What does that mean? If we tell you something is wonderful, and if we tell you the right way, you start believing it's wonderful. Let me give you an example. How are McDonald's hamburgers? Seriously. Yeah. Uh, if you think about it right now, you're going, it's like a piece of cardboard between two other pieces of cardboard with uh, some ketchup and mustard and a pickle. Um, a really good hamburger is usually cooked at a diner, and when you bite into it, the grease drips down your arm. That's a good burger. But McDonald's has sold more burgers than anybody has ever sold, and I doubt they'll, they don't even count anymore. I mean, it used to say 5 million served, 10 billion served, 300 million served. It, they don't even count it anymore. Um, we get a diverse response. Uh, and I say that uh, we drive the diverse responses online. In other words, if we go out there and say, we want you to go to this website to see this, people will go. Not all of them, but people will go. And the other reason is radio is considered a friend. In general, it's like, this is my station. 
Think about this with television. Nobody has ever says, well, my favorite TV station is, you know, TV2 out of New York City. That's not said. What's said is, oh, my favorite station is, you know, uh, WHTZ. You like the interaction with the announcers. You like the interaction, the local information. So remember, these are your key seven points on why radio works. We talk about this. It's local, it's economical, it's personal, it's flexible. Again, you'll want to read this out of the uh, book when you get done with this. And uh, we've also got here radio station revenues. They're still going up. Why are they going up? Because we know what we're doing and we do it well. But now some people are going to ask this question. And this is the question of the decade. They're going to say, what about social media? Can't you do all those things on social media? Let's think. I want to show you this particularly. This is called the Pepsi Refresh Project. It was unveiled in 2010. I was actually at the meeting in Las Vegas where they unveiled it. They said, we are going to pull all of our money out of television, radio, and all this other stuff and come up with the Pepsi Refresh Project. Uh, this is the man who put it all together. And what he says is we took a divergent path. We wanted to explore how a brand could integrate into the digital space. Huh? Uh, read that. Okay. I don't even know what that means. But when they said it, we were all sitting there going, what does that mean? All right. Basically, the Pepsi Refresh Project said, all you have to do is write in about a project you want done in your community. And if yours gets the most likes or the most this or that, we'll send money to you so that you can do those things. Of course, they didn't advertise it anywhere except on Facebook and Twitter and social media. So here's the results. Now these results are written by the Wall Street Journal and a book that I want you to buy. It's called The 101 Contrarian Ideas About Advertising. He very well explained this, but here's the results. And it says it's been a disaster. Now I don't like reading in my slides, but I'm gonna read this. Pepsi-Cola and Diet Pepsi each lost 5% of market share in the past year. 5% in one year. How long does it take to build that market share back up? Well, if the winner of that was Diet Coke, which it was, what happens? How do you restart that engine? Think of advertising and marketing as the engine on a train. You pull the engine off the train, the train eventually slows down and stops. Once that thing stops, how much fuel does it take to get it back up to speed? In 2010, Pepsi's market share erosion accelerated by eight times compared to the previous year. You can read it all here. It was ugly. <laughs> this is what the uh, Wall Street Journal wrote. The Refresh Project accomplished everything a social media program is expanded to do. 80 million votes were registered, 3.5 million, million likes on the Pepsi Facebook page, 60,000 Twitter followers. The only thing it wouldn't do, quote, it didn't sell Pepsi. Why didn't it sell Pepsi? Well, here's the problem. Social media is supposed to be social. Social is interaction between two people. How does a company respond to 3.5 million new friends? How do you talk to them? How do you have a two-way conversation? You don't. And by the way, their page is pretty much nothing anymore. Let's talk about click-throughs. A click-through is when you see an ad on a web page and there's a couple words on it and you click it. And then it takes you to another page where they go ahead and explain it just a little more. Okay? The first part is just the ad that might say boat rentals. That's all. Then you click to the second page where they give you their elevator speech. Remember this? Your elevator speech. 30 seconds designed to hook you in enough to say, I want more information. Now think about what I just told you. A click through is when you click to get a 30 second message. What do click throughs cost? There are all kinds of ranges. Um, some of these cost as little as three or four bucks. Some of them, insurance companies are known to pay $19 for a click-through, 19 bucks. How, what's the click-through rate on radio? Well, think about it. Everybody who hears the ad hears the 30-second message. That means every ad is a click-through, but not for one person. If the station has a bunch of listeners, like five or 6,000 or 10,000 at any given minute, that's 10,000 click-throughs. 
or 6,000 click-throughs. Here, let's do this math right here. Let's say we got a market, a total market of 100,000 people, and the station has a 6 rating. It's an average rating in an average market. That means at any given moment, 6,000 people might be listening. Now, the average listener is 3 hours a day, 5.3 hours on the weekend, and let's say that the time spent listening is an average of 1.5 hours a day. 8 ads should equal 3 impressions on that audience. You stick 8 ads during that week, you should get about 3 impressions on the audience if it's 8 ads in one day. So 18,000 impressions, if you have a $10 ad, $80, is 4 tenths of 1 cent per impression. 4 tenths of 1 cent for a radio ad versus $17 for that click-through ad for the insurance company on the internet. Do the math. This is the cost per impression. This is powerful stuff. Later, go back to this page in the book and really get a hold of this. Now, some people are also going to tell you that search engines. You want to go for search engine optimization because people show up on the first page or second page, get more click-throughs. Well, that part is true, but wouldn't you rather have them going directly to your site rather than for somebody who paid more for uh, SEO, search engine optimization, than you did? That's all it is. It's a gambling game. SEO last week might have been $500 for the month. But this week, the guy across from you spent $500. Now you're going to have to spend seven. Maybe the next guy spends eight, nine. How, what are you going to have to spend to get to the top of that search engine? But search engines are this. When no other business comes to mind, a search engine or Yellow Pages, same thing, are a directional reference for people who've already made up their minds to buy a product or service. Let me say that again. A search engine or the Yellow Pages are a directional reference for somebody who's already made up their mind to buy a product or service, but they don't know anybody. And so now they're going to these, and now you're done. And by the way, anybody who still is buying Yellow Pages has a problem, because on my smartphone, I hit the little Google button, and if I say pizza, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, it comes back and gives me all of those. And I'm not talking about Surrey. This is on uh, 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 Android phones, too, now. It's a Google function. Remember this. The real trick here is what we want people to do is we want people to go directly to that site. Amazon.com wants you to go to Amazon. They don't want you to put Amazon in the search engine. You can do anything on radio. Look at these guys. You know them all. If you don't, it'll be in your homework. And look what they've done. You ever listen to a Prairie Home Companion? Tom Baudet for Motel 6. These things are still out there. You can still be so creative on the radio, and all of these people are masters at doing it. 70%. Nearly 70% 70 of Americans tune into the radio each week for two hours and 41 minutes. Nearly 98% tune in all the time. Some people say, well, what about Sirius and XM? Okay, let's take a look. There are 200 channels on a Sirius radio. Now, you've got Howard Stern here, who Howard 100 is their top channel. They estimate 1.2 million listeners out of 350 million people. Um, you know, what are we talking about? Three-tenths of 1%? It's not even moving the needle in your local market. It doesn't matter. So it's, when people say everybody has satellite radio, no, a lot of people who are wealthier have satellite radio. They'll get it in their cars. They want to listen to this or that. Uh, some of the younger people will listen to those channels. But in general, 6% is its entire, um, entire erosion into the market. And divide that by 200 channels, and you come up with 3 tenths of a percent. And that's it on any channel. Now, here's your homework for tonight. I want you to write five statements on why radio is a great advertising medium for any business. Five sentences. I want you to make a list of everything that was going to kill radio. You want to do this, find one of the 50-year-old people at the radio station, 50 and up. They remember all of it. Television was going to kill radio, and then MTV was going to kill radio. Cassette tapes were going to kill radio. A tracks were going to kill radio. Uh, CD changers in your car were going to kill radio. Satellite was going to kill radio. We're still here. We are the cockroaches. We will be here when the world ends. It's just radio, cockroaches, and Keith Richards. That's about it. Make a list of everything that was going to kill radio. Next, create one sentence on why you personally love radio. And now this last one, and this one's important. 
I want you to write a, a 60 second first person ad. First person meaning I'm going to talk about it myself. Hi, this is Chris Rolando, and let me tell you why I love working in radio. For the past 35 years, I have helped unload more shipping containers, load up more people's trunks with merchandise, brought in new products, retired old products, changed people's lives, and I did it all by writing and selling radio commercials. Can I do that for your business? I sure can. I want you to find me. My name is Chris Rolando. I work at the radio station. By the way, you notice I didn't give my phone number because they're never going to remember it. I didn't give my email address. They're never going to remember it. I told them to find me. Can they find me? Yeah. Put my name in Google. You'll find me. That's your homework for tonight. Tomorrow, uphill. Two more days to go, folks, and we're ready. Have you completed your three CNAs for this week yet? You got two days left. It's required. Make some more cold calls. Get some more appointments for next week. By the way, those completed CNAs from last week, by now you should have your spec spots written and your presentation almost ready. And you should be calling now to get the appointments for this week. That means either today, tomorrow, or Friday to go in and do the closing call. Don't try it on your own. Bring your sales manager with you for a couple reasons. Number one, they're better at this than you are. Number two, they have higher authority. Number three, if they can't close it, you can look at them and say, well, how'd you expect me to do it? See you tomorrow. Life is short, and being in radio can grind it to a halt. Influence FM is for running your stations at your convenience, when you want, where you want. With Influence FM, you can now do the impossible. Enjoy your life, all the while knowing that Influence FM will notify you instantly about any anomalies. And with the flick of a thumb, you can see that your station's assets and operations are running at full speed. Go ahead, take that vacation. We dare you. We sell freedom, not software. Free yourself to do, well, precisely what you want.